Welcome to Freaky Fauna Friday, where every Friday we take a little time and explore some of the freaks of nature from around the planet we cherish so deeply. So please, jump aboard and let's explore the wilds together. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am the great and powerful mystery. And I am Jay. Ooh, and today... Uh, we're going to bring you another prehistoric beast. Prehistoric? Yeah. Oh. Because somebody yelled at me on YouTube about dinosaurs. Uh-oh. So it got under my skin. Yeah, that's a bad thing to do. They said that, don't believe in the lies, dinosaurs aren't real and all that stuff. Oh, no. It was probably Joel with a fake account. And they might be right, though. They're not, no. Well, we're not going to talk about dinosaur today. Oh. We are going to talk about something that lived alongside with them, which are arguably just as cool or even more cool. The two major groups of reptiles that lived during the time, the reigning of the dinosaurs. We're going to talk about the largest flying animal ever. What would that be? Quetzalcoatlus. Oh, okay. That big, uh, what's a big reptile? Yeah, you're right. It is a reptile. It is yeah. a beaked reptile. Mm. Uh, it's very, a, wait, it's a what reptile? Beaked. Beaked reptile. Okay. Like they have a beak. Right, yeah. And it's... Uh, and then not all, not so the pterosaurs is the main family group. And there's tons and tons of lineages. They did, they had just as much success as dinosaurs did with branching out and getting all kinds of different forms from hmm. like literally there's some of these that look like bats, basically little tiny bird like creatures walked on their legs. Like there were some of these that like the size of hummingbirds. Oh, we're gonna talk about the biggest one of them, uh, which once like, we talked about the Argentinosaurus a couple years or not a couple years ago, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, and it was, you know, it broke all the records when it was discovered and stuff like that. Well, Quetzalcoatlus did a very similar thing. How big do you think this thing was? Um, twenty-five feet across. Wingspan? Yeah. So close to forty. Oh, okay. Uh, the same size as a propeller plane. Oh. And we estimated up to about six hundred pounds. That's pretty light. Yeah, they have to be. I mean, true. I mean, yeah, if they're flying, but. So a uh, cool thing why we think that like, Quetzalcoatlus and other pterosaurs can get so much bigger is how they take off. It's because okay. they use both their legs and their arms as a part of like a running gait jump. Oh, okay. So it allowed much larger flying to take place. Because we look at animals like California condors and stuff like that. Is they, that how they do it? They No, they have a lot of trouble taking off from straight on the ground. Okay. Like, that's why they live on high cliffs and stuff like that because it's easier. To just jump let, off yeah. and, just, and then spread those wings out yeah. and glide up. But these, uh, like Quetzalcoatlus, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that they hunted in forest. So they were walking around? Yeah, giraffe size. So they're about 22 foot tall when they're walking around on the ground. 22 feet tall? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty big. 10 foot long bill. Oh my gosh, okay. These things, uh, we think they were like secretary birds where they would spear all these little dinosaurs and stuff like that. Uh, hmm. Recently, the reason I did this is uh, the new Walking with Dinosaurs or whatever it is, the very, very new one that came out like a couple weeks ago, featured Quetzalcoatlus. And T Rex and two Quetzalcoatlus scared off a T Rex, and a lot of people were Mad. very upset with yeah. that. Personally, I don't know if that is very functional because it's like, well, the T Rex would be worried about losing an eye, and I get that, you know, because they're very dangerous. You know, a 10 foot long bill swinging around on the end of a 10 foot long neck. Yeah, but the thing's only, I mean, it's only 600 pounds. And a T Rex is pushing 12,000. Yeah, it could just run into it. As long like, as it doesn't get its eye. That's pretty much the only, like, T Rexes need their eyes. Well, yeah. But yeah, not dinosaurs. I can't tell you how many people have said that they're, you know, not real. Like they're they're they're, they're dinosaurs. Oh, oh, Quetzalcoatlus. So, this is an American creature even though it has its name in Aztec legends, but we'll get to there. Quetzalcoatlus was first discovered in 1971 by Douglas All A Lawson, a fossil hunter in Big Bend National Park in Texas. I wanted to go to Big Bend forever. And it's Big Bend. Big Bend mm -hmm. with a D. Mhm. Mm uh, he found part of the wing, the forearms, and then the wingspan for estimated of over 33 feet. So he found a, a large animal, not a full-grown monster, but he found a pretty big one. And at that point in the 70s, I think they thought they topped out at like 16 to 17-foot wingspans. Oh, for some okay. of the that's biggest. They, they and, thought? And yeah. Okay. And this one, they, one wing he found was this, the same size as what they thought the whole wingspan of was maxed out at. Uh, like, a lot of people try to... Like, you know, with fossils, it's kind of hard, especially with fragmented fossils till we get more complete skeletons. They were trying to say it was like like spearing stuff with its fingers. There was all kinds of stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, they are, like bats are, they have stretched finger, like they have elongated finger bones and stretched membrane over those fingers. 
The name Quetzalcoatlus means feathered serpent god, uh, well, the language of the Aztecs. Uh, and it got this name, pro- it, it was given this name from its size alone and being able to fly. So now we know a lot of pterosaurs actually did have a downy like feather thing, mm. uh, where they, a lot of these pterosaurs were kind of fluffy. We don't think uh, Quetzalcoatlus probably was because of how large it was. It probably wouldn't need it. You yeah. Know? Uh, we talked about that with like, you know, we think Triceratops had quills, but some of the smaller dinosaurs probably were fully feathered. And But stuff like uh, Argentinosaurus from last or a couple weeks ago didn't need to be anything. It could live in the Arctic because it was literally just so big. So big. It had enough body heat. Yeah. It was not going to, it, it wasn't in any danger. But yeah, what do you think so far? That's interesting. I mean, uh, it's just a big uh, reptile. I mean, I don't know. And it's it's so far. I I didn't know it had a big ten foot long beak and was stabbing so stuff. The Toledo Zoo has a replica of one on oh, display, really? and you can stand under it. There's a picture of me under it, and I like barely come up to its tail. So why don't they have the real thing, like the real fossils? They do. Oh, I think said it was a replica. Like uh, of it when it was alive. Oh, okay. Like with okay, skin okay. and wings. Oh, like a full on like a oh, replica. Okay, I just thought you meant like the. No, no, they had. I don't know if they have the bones. They don't have a lot of bones on display at the Toledo Zoo, but they have like the Walking with Dinosaurs path. Oh, okay. I don't uh, think I've ever been up there like for that. It's it's pretty cool. But hmm. uh, me and my nephew went up, and Quetzalcoatlus is just such a unique animal. And, but there was a couple others that were in its family that were pretty close. These guys had a pretty long reign, but we'll talk about that. Uh. There's a lot of questions about how these guys got food because right. they're very, very big. And they're, we think, you know, some, uh, some of the pterosaurs could run pretty quick on all fours. Hmm. They don't oh, look like with it. their yeah. hands and feet. Okay. Yeah. Like giraffes. Like giraffes can move pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, so we think these guys could have been possibly scavengers, like uh, modern day vultures. Uh, there was plenty of big carnivores during the time of the Cretaceous, and they may have been taking advantage of their overall size hmm, okay. and bullying most other carnivores off the carcasses. Off, yeah, yeah. Uh, they took a, they had very very excellent eyesight, and they were just massive. Hmm. So when you know, like we said, they're not very heavy, but we're also thinking of yeah, as humans thinking, you know, right? When animals just kind of look over at general size, right? And this thing's twenty two foot tall, much taller than a T Rex, and then it opens its wings to be forty foot tall. It looks just absolutely massive. And probably a terrifying. And there's there's three or four of them in a group. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could see definitely where a T Rex may uh may wait. Yeah, I guess I guess I guess maybe. But yeah, when it comes down to an actual fu- full on fight, I don't think they stood much of a chance. No, but no. It's all about the intimidation thing because carnivores are very right. smart, you know. Where right. They'll be yeah. like, Yeah, it's not worth the fight. They pick their battles. Uh it also was thought that it could be a waiting feeder. Well, waiting like mod- like modern day herons and cranes. Their bodies do have some similarities. Okay, these giant beaks, spearing fish, walking right, yeah. through and stuff like that, uh, or even being a skim feeder. So what's that mean? So like modern day eagles and osprey, they'll kind of fly over the water surface and grab a fish out of the water and keep flying. Oh, okay. So they do that with their beaks instead of their feet. These uh, Quetzalcoatlus. That's what they think they could. Okay. That that's why the bills were so big is because they were actually grabbing, just diving or yeah. scooping into the water and getting stuff out of or it. Or spearing, spearing even, out. Of yeah, even oh, fully nice. spearing like a swordfish. I guess I I've never seen a I don't, a picture of one of these like a or an artist rendition of one with a big beak or spear like. It's massive. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. That's the largest flying thing ever. Ten feet like beak. Yeah. No, thank you. The most leading theory currently is like storks and other birds of those families. They ate small land animals on the ground, uh, and they stayed around streams, rivers, and lakes. And they would walk through grasslands Mm. or even uh, forested shrublands and pick off small animals. Mm, Okay. So we think of these herons and storks as being mostly fish eaters, which don't get me wrong, they do. Right. But they will go into the forest and eat all the snakes, voles, everything. Oh, storks will? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Storks eat rabbits. They eat like they, they look for rabbits' nests and stuff like that. Like babies, or yeah. like okay, that's what they're targeting. They'll eat a full rabbit. It's just harder to catch. Yeah, but it's, it just seems like that'd be too nest big. raiders because they're so big. Yeah, okay. Oh, they're birds. Birds will swallow whatever. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, so these guys are like once again not a dinosaur. How far? So we did a lot of estimates on how far these guys could fly and such with weight distribution. How long or how far do you think they could fly? I have two numbers. I have a, a, an actual number of days, and I have a number of miles. I bet they could fly landing. for quite a few days as big as they are. Like I imagine they get up in the air, and they 
just as being that big, it could probably glide for a long, long time. So I don't know. Uh, uh, 56 hours. Which is? Two days, two and a half days, roughly. 10 days. Oh, okay, 10 days. And 8,000 miles without landing. Holy moly. Okay. So we kind of think cuts aquatics may have been a circumnavigating species. You would have to be if you're up there that long. If you're, if you're flying 8,000 miles. I'm not saying that they would do that every time. Right, but they could. They could. Yeah. I mean, if you can do that, why wouldn't you be a circumnavigating species? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it, it's very interesting. Uh, and these guys lived. I'm trying to get to it. So they had a very, very, very long time. So the whole, like the whole pterosaur family, was from 228 million years ago to 66 million years ago. They went extinct with the dinosaurs, as far as we know. Uh, but these guys had themselves like a 15 million year span because they were just there was nothing. Nobody knocking them off their their podium. Right. They were almost. It was like once T Rex kind of got in its niche too. It's just like nothing. T-Rex, like we talk about the other dinosaurs, like Giganotosaurus and Spinosaurus. uh, Giganotosaurus was way before T-Rex, but Spinosaurus, I believe, lived at the same time. Spinosaurus aegypticus. They were all around 40 foot long or all around, you know, 15 to 20 foot tall. But T-Rex was like three times heavier. Mm, Okay. And had a bite force that was like three times stronger. Oh, dang. It was built. It was the difference between a greyhound and a pit bull. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Makes more sense. Yeah. Where every like the modern Jurassic Park maybe had Giganotosaurus as just this unstoppable monster. Yeah, and it wasn't. It oh, was okay. it was the similar volume of a T Rex, but it had shearing jaws. So its jaws were made to cut chunks of chunks of flesh off these large like sauropods, and it would kind of wear them down. Mm. More like how a hyena kills a really big animal as it just kind of wears it down. A mm-hmm. little bit. A T Rex is just made to crush, crush and kill right now. Yeah. Crush. But yeah, so. Next time you want to think about Quetzalcoatlus, imagine a flying giraffe. I love giraffes. Because they're about the same. A big adult giraffe is about the same size as a big adult Quetzalcoatlus for height. Just needs the 40-foot wingspan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That would be something to see. And they'll lose about 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds. Oh, that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you like Quetzalcoatlus? Yeah, it's a neat uh, creature, I guess. I mean, I, I guess that's how I categorize it. My final freaky fauna fact for you. Ooh, let's hear it. Quetzalcoatlus has five syllables in it. Quetzalcoatl. Wait, huh? That's what it says. Because it's really difficult to say Quetzal- properly. Quetzalcoatlus. So if you say it with more or less than five syllables, you're saying the name wrong. Uh huh. Well, there you go. Quetzalcoatlus. That's five. That is it. All right. There you, you go. Did it right. Because I, re- I think I was, I think I do it, and I do less. Hmm. No, I, I think you're doing good. And then I think there's other people I hear it, and it's more. Yeah, there's like eight in there. Yeah. I think I was doing that at the so beginning. So five syllables is the correct. Oh, interesting. That makes it easier to remember. Yeah. Or how to say it, at least. So I've hoped you guys have enjoyed this gigantic flying reptile. Can you imagine? It would eat people. Like, it would eat people today pretty easily. Like, the dinosaurs we think they were eating were like two to 400 pounds running through the woods. Like, that's what we think of small dinosaurs. Okay. But it's like what we think of really large, like, deer and... Yeah, stuff like that, and people. Well, It'd be, it would 100 percent just be eating people today. Shoot, we're just soft little bags of meat. Mm-hmm. That's how we are. I mean, it'd be easy. Oh yeah, it would be eating us. Oh man, so Quetzalcoatlus. Mm-hmm. Quetzalco- Quetzalcoatlus. There we go. I said it right that time. There you go. I think you were going for six in that last I attempt. Did. I did. Dang it. It's hard. It is. Yeah. It's a hard word to say properly. But the five syllable trick helps. Yeah. Syllable. Syllable. Yeah. Yeah. Add more syllables to the word syllable. Syllable. Yeah. All right, I've been the Great and Powerful Mystery. And I've been Jay. As you guys go into this weekend, just be happy. Enjoy the warm weather. Get out in the sun, but wear sunscreen. Eat a grape. If you can. If you can't, don't do it. Eat a raspberry. If you can. If you can't, don't do it. We're not food experts. Find some native plants and smell them. If you can. (laughs) We're not, once again, health experts. Touch grass. Unless you're allergic. Put your finger in some dirt. Unless you're allergic. To dirt? Yeah. It's going to be an awful place for you. (laughs) All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Freaky Fat on a Friday. If you want to help the podcast grow, remember to share and give it a five-star review.